What's going on folks? This is your boy Abhivikram Singh returning to you with another fresh video for the tips and tricks section of the Indian professionals version. In this video, we are going to talk about the four high paying graduate roles that students can get after they graduate from university. If that's something that you guys are interested in, stay tuned and keep watching. One of the most basic questions that I get asked from a lot of students and immigrants that are coming into Australia is, Hey, Abhi, I'm trying to go for this master's course in so-and-so field. What does the job industry look like there? Abhi, I'm trying to study masters in engineering. Um, what sort of companies are hiring for those roles? Now, the tricky part about this whole process is I don't have a soothsayer card. I don't have clairvoyant abilities where I can tell, all right, you know, this is the kind of industry that doing that's doing really well and these are the kind of roles that are available and that's what your pay will be so in this video i thought i'll cover four graduate roles that are available to students who are just coming out of university be it their bachelor's degree or they just completed their master's degree and i've picked up an industry which is technology or it quite knowledgeable to me in in certain aspects um, and that's what I'm really comfortable with. So hopefully that covers off a fair few fields that you guys might be wondering um, what sort of opportunities and options are out there. Now, the first role I want to cover off is a business analyst or a data analyst or a solutions consultant. Now, this is one of the most sought after courses um, in the bachelor's or master's degree when students are coming into Australia, purely because of the fact that it um, holds a very high ranking on the SOL list um, and it's a clear cut pathway uh, to getting a permanent residency. What a business analyst does is try to bridge the gap between IT systems and customers of businesses by bringing about improvements in their processes. They use a data-driven approach. They use analytics to make and bring about these changes, which actually bring about a lot of efficiencies um, in internal operations or actually help in improving top line or the bottom line for a profit and loss statement for a business. These roles of a data analyst or a business analyst is often uh, cited as a connector role between your front end employees who are dealing with customers on a day to day basis and the, your back end developers who are actually building product. Taking up courses uh, in your bachelor degree or your master's degree in management information systems, data science, business analytics, or network securities is often the easiest and quickest pathway for you to jump into the business analyst pathway um, at, at any given company. The different verticals in, a, in the tech industry which hire for these roles could vary anywhere between fintech, services, FMCG, SaaS, which is your system as a service. Now, what I'm showing here is actually a career path diagram for what a business analyst can have um, given he's in any IT or tech company based here in Australia. It becomes very comprehensive when you look at this and say, hey, there are eight different career paths that a BA can take. A typical or standard or traditional way of what a BA becomes is, hey, he goes on to becoming a senior BA, a lead BA, principal BA, and he otherwise he just heads a BA back to practice at that given company. They could also go up and become a pre-sales consultant, which is essentially used to solution engineer any products or um, services that companies usually have. They also have varied roles where they can become agile coaches or agile practice managers or even solution architects at any given company. At the end of the day, it really boils down to what sort of practices, uh, what sort of processes, improvements, and uh, agile changes need to be brought about in a company. And accordingly, each company in Australia sort of has their own uh, department and designation and roles assigned for a typical PA at their firm. All in all, that's what a typical career path diagram looks like. What I also did was go and research a little bit about what the average salaries for a PA looks like. Now, based on pay scale or glass store salaries, we sort of accumulated the data and what we realized was and a typical BA could make anywhere from $58,000 all the way up to $130,000 annually. Now, this is before tax, uh, but usually an entry level role for a PA would vary anywhere between sixty to seventy thousand dollars. That's what you would typically be looking at coming into the market at an entry level role. And obviously, based on the bonuses and the profit sharing models that those companies have for um, hiring new employees, that varies from different company to company. 
and ultimately um, your pay would be determined by that as well. All right, so that covers the first high paying graduate role of becoming a business analyst, data analyst, or a solutions consultant. Coming over to the second component, the second high paying graduate role that you could possibly take up is the career path of joining a typical IT or a backend developer. Now products and services are obviously everything that determines of what happens at a company. And at the core of it are software developers that are sitting and developing those products. You could be anything varying from a UI UX developer, a typical programmer being one being specialized in C, C++ or Java. You could also be a front-end developer or a back-end developer, or hey, if you have the special skills, a full-stack developer, which also means that you need to be proficient in programming skills that come through a master's in IT degree, master's in computer engineering, or even master's in mathematics and statistics. Um, with a core analysis in programming. Now, looking at a career path for what it, what a typical developer could probably foresee um, in his career progression in a company, you would come into a company as a junior dev. Um, now, this could be in any specific sub department of your core department of IT, where you can join in as a software developer, you know, progress into becoming a lead developer or also end up becoming an expert coder or a scrum master. Um, another route that you could take would be more of a full stack dev role where, hey, you become a senior software dev, you're leading the team. And at the end of the day, obviously there are different sub segments where you could have different managerial roles in the middle of this. But at the end of the day, you could also end up becoming a CTO or a CIO. The range or the time frame for becoming a CTO all the way from a junior dev could vary anywhere from 10 to 15 years. The third component or the third and fourth component that I like to cover is more of a front end or a customer facing kind of role where the third part would be, hey, you're becoming a specialist in business development or account management. There are certain skill sets that you need to develop which are very unique or special in that scenario. A few things that come up there are, hey, your, your soft skills need to be on point. Uh, your negotiation skills and your tactical skills need to be superior. Um, and also the fact that you're trying to get new customers on board to use products and services that your business is trying to, um, you know, offer. All right. Now, looking at a typical career path in business development or account management, uh, it's pretty simple. Every single company in any specific industry, not even IT, um, would have these three career paths which go all the way from being, hey, if you look at the business development side of things, you could be a business development rep, become an A, move to becoming a manager, director level of VP, and then ultimately become a chief revenue officer, which could eventually lead to you becoming a CEO of that company. On the other side of things, you have your account management, where your business developers are essentially people who get new business on the board, who get new customers and new clients on board and your account managers are essentially the guys who handle those accounts and those clients uh, and try to grow that business from what they've come on board with to actually spending more and more for your products and services. So this could vary anywhere from becoming a BDR, an account manager, a channel director, all the way up to a chief business officer, right? On the third flag or the third pathway lane that we could look at is, hey, you're looking more on the operation side of things, but it also is a part of the same career path where you're becoming a day-to-day -day CRM specialist, becoming an ops manager and enablement director, you know, all the way growing up to becoming a chief strategic officer. Now, once again, moving all the way from an entry level role uh, to a C-level executive could take anywhere from 10 to 15 years at a short term period or anywhere all the way up to 20 years too. All right, now comes the fun part. What do you make as an entry-level BDR or an account development manager or a CRM specialist that's coming fresh into the customer-facing kind of role? The average salary would be $57,000 per year. Now, this is based off um, you know, a few salaries that they've taken off of Payscale Australia, and this is just a generic number to the industry. So if it gives you a level of benchmark, that's what you would probably be looking at. However, since it's a customer facing role, majority of the major money that comes here is from your commissions. So commissions could range anywhere from, let's say, 6K all the way up to 40K or annual salary. So it's a very uh, lucrative role. However, one that's not taken up often, but hey, you know what? It's out there. Excellent. So now that we've covered business development and account management, one really, really crucial department is marketing. 
What is marketing? It is essentially a department that specializes in getting food on the table. Now, what I mean by that is for any business or any company to do business with other companies or other customers and get more people is actually, uh, it's very, very important to generate interest out in the market about what your company does. Now, what that means or what the specific role is of a marketer in the Australian market is to generate as much interest about your company through various channels and try to bring in as many inbound leads or as many inbound prospective interested parties or prospective customers to start getting converted into paying customers. Now that's what the marketers do to help the business development and the account management team to convert fresh leads into actual paying customers and generating revenue. It's interesting in today's world, where marketing has is also subdivided into so many different segments where you could be a digital marketer you could specialize in seo which is search and engine optimization um, you could also be looking at becoming a social media manager so it's very interesting the kind of career path that you can have internally now it varies very differently with all the different companies but a generic career path is what this would look like excellent so you get your first entry-level role as a marketing coordinator um, where you're pretty much doing all the basics or all the different channels um, that your company markets on right so you could go and become an internet marketing specialist where hey you start looking at becoming an SEM or an SEO manager uh, to look at demand generation and overall progress to become a VP in marketing. Or if you take up a different route, well, nowadays with Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, there's a lot of social media marketing that happens and there are a lot of coordinators who manage all those platforms and all those company accounts um, on those platforms to generate interest from different companies or different customers to start doing business with their specific company. Progresses into becoming a marketing director and ultimately you could look at yourself getting a role of a CMO, which is a chief marketing officer. All in all, once again, 15 to 20 years is what it takes to transgress from becoming a marketing coordinator all the way up to a CMO. For all you uh, fresh starters who are actually trying to get into the market for the first time, trying to understand and trying to make your career in, a, in marketing, these are some of the certain avenues that you could possibly look at, which is social media, paid content marketing, PR and link building, moving on to traditional SEO and email. All right. An entry level salary for what a marketer would probably get in the market is an average salary of $60,000 per year. Now, obviously, majority of their cash is also locked up in commissions and bonuses because, hey, unless and until you're getting fresh, hot leads and fresh, hot prospective um, customers onto the table, um, usual marketers don't get paid out and majority of their compensation is backed up in bonuses. All right, so that covers off the four high paying graduate roles that usually students go after um, here down in Australia. Now, it's very interesting because of COVID-19, there is actually a very big dearth of, or rather there's a lack of strong professionals entering into the market, which is actually a very exciting time for new people or new students who are graduating out of uni. Uh, because there is a lack of fresh talent here. Majority of the people, majority of professionals who used to work in Australia have actually gone back uh, because of the strict COVID-19 rules and lockdown rules of Australia. Strong pool of available jobs for students that are entering the market right now. And hopefully that covers off and gives a very high level overview of what salaries look like, what career paths look like. Excellent. So hopefully you guys like that video. Uh, make sure to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Write down in the comment sections about certain departments or certain companies or industries that you're preferably looking into. Since I have a little bit of knowledge about this, industry which is why i only concentrated on some of the departments within this industry um, until then i'll see you in the next video